Future Nostalgia was my was my chance for me to be able to do a very like polished pop dance disco record um, that after having done that and having done 97 shows and toured and danced my ass off and had so much fun around the world that this album was so much about how do I take what were my most favorite things from that whole experience and create something unique and a lot of that was the live instrumentation how things felt so organic how some things felt really spontaneous and free-flowing in the moment of how they would evolve on stage and I just I wanted to recreate that for for radical optimism when I was going into the when going into the studio to make this and also in terms of like the melodies and the sounds it was so much more free flowing I think yeah I think a lot of the songs show that sense of resilience and maturity throughout and growing and growth and all of that is is you know the radical side of it you know it's it's pushing yourself to be happy and to see things with an optimistic perspective or sometimes I say to be like violently happy <laughs> you know you have to sometimes push yourself into into that that feeling when I was younger I used to have a blog and I used to love like sharing what I was like cooking or what I was making or what movie I watched or what you know just to kind of and it was really just for my friends and I guess Service 95, that was, it, it's always been something that I've been passionate about, but now I have the resources and the means to be able to commission stories from journalists who can really tell these stories, who will do it way better than I will, that, you know, be able to tell stories from all around the world, not from a Western, not solely from a Western lens. And those are things that I've always been curious about, but now I'm able to do them in a way that I could have only ever dreamed of. For me, Glastonbury has always um, been the biggest dream. It's been my barometer every time I go into the studio when I write a song I love. It's like, how is this going to sound at Glastonbury? Is it going to work? So um, it, it's just always been on my dream board of something that I wanted to do. And I was very specific on my dream board. I said the Friday night because I knew that I wanted to stay and party for the Friday after <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. So, you know, if you're manifesting out there, be specific because it might happen. Um, and it's just, yeah, I, the, I guess the, the biggest show of my career. So I've been planning it for a very long time, dreaming it up, thinking about it. We started rehearsals. Um, everything's in in lead up to that and yeah I'm really really looking forward to it you know once Anna decides what the theme is it's kind of like unpicking that and and seeing you know it's it's um, sleeping beauty garden of time you know I guess that's either like diving into a designer's archive or speaking to them and getting them to pull from their own um, favorite show of theirs and something that you know something that's a sleeping beauty something that's been living in their mind for a long time something that maybe they wanted to make and didn't or um, you know diving into their kind of garden of time it can be it can be so many things I think there's going to be lots of different archive vintage looks on the carpet this year there's going to be lots from you know inspiration being drawn and from lots of different eras it's going to be interesting i'm 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 looking forward to it but most of all it's just fun you know going in and hanging out with your friends and dressing up and um it's going to be a fun night but yeah i love kind of unpicking a theme and and thinking about where it's going to take us <laughs>